Good morning. How are you today? I guess I need to adjust this a little bit so you can see me. So excuse me while I come up. <laughs> there, that's much better. So just make yourself comfortable and arrive for a moment. We're going to do my favorite class of all, the traditional Saturday morning deep stretch class here at Salisbury Yoga. So welcome, I'm Monica Leaking, and this is our studio, Salisbury Yoga and Wellness Center. So thanks for joining me in my studio this morning ah, for my favorite class. So these classes I'm offering freely so that anyone can participate. I know many of us <laughs> have lost our income. And um, so I don't want to charge for people that can't afford it. If you do feel inclined to um, contribute to help me continue to offer these classes to you, I invite you to go to salisburyyoga.com slash donations and contribute whatever you can. Thank you, sorry to take a pause for that message. I just thought I'd start that way. <clears throat> Not my favorite way to do it, but these are the times, right? <laughs> so we're going to, this is a very slow class. And so we're gonna start lying down. So go ahead and lie down on your mat. Um, if you have a folding chair handy, you can keep that handy for maybe the, the end of the practice. Or you can, uh, I'm gonna give you the option to either end with legs up the chair or traditional shavasana. So just take a moment and get comfortable. You might just stretch really long first on the mat. And really stretch from the right foot, the right heel to the right fingers. Ah, maybe side out and then stretch from the left foot to the left fingers, maybe side out. And then it might feel good to bring the knees into the chest and just kind of rock side to side on the lower back. During this class, it's going to, we're gonna spend most of the class lying on the floor or being on hands and knees. So. We're not going to do any standing poses. This is just a yummy class you can do on a lazy Saturday or Sunday morning if you like circle your knees. Or it's also a wonderful class to do before you go to bed to help you sleep if you've had a busy day and you're out working to protect us all, I thank you. And you might use this class in the evening. It's a, it's a nice gift to help you, not a gift, but a gift to help you um, just relax. So um, you, can, you probably can't see, but I'm taking constructive rest pose. That means my feet are pretty wide apart and comfortable, a comfortable distance away from the hips. And then I'm letting the knees support each other. And now I'm adjusting the feet so that I'm more comfortable. So just find where your body is comfortable. This is a very deep therapeutic release of the psoas muscle. And the first time you do it, it might feel a little awkward, but you'll, you're really helping your body to come into the present moment. can have the hands by the sides or on your belly. And let your body arrive on the mat. Make any adjustments. I always feel like it feels really good to just turn my head side to side. And then finding where the back of your head is resting on the floor. And then you might join me in giving a little massage to your face. So I'm taking my fingertips and just kind of making gentle circles around the forehead, very gentle circles, gentle self-massage, coming out to the temples, just making gentle circles with the fingertips. 
You can also bring the fingertips together and the middle of the forehead with the hands kind of cupped and then kind of pull out to the sides. So do that for a little while. You can work your way down to the jaw joints. Uh, and you might come down to the jaw, maybe go behind the ears a little bit. And sometimes, and then maybe uh, massage the place where the, um, the cranium, your skull meets the neck and kind of dig your fingers in there. You probably can't see what I'm doing. So I'm um, just trying to describe what I'm doing. What I'm doing is just giving my face and my neck a gentle massage. We forget we can take a moment to do these nourishing things for ourselves. We might do them for someone else, but usually we don't do them for ourselves. Sometimes it feels really good to pull on the earlobes and then walk your fingers up the sides of the ears, maybe even rubbing the tops of the ears, rubbing around the temples again, or just above the ears. Maybe coming to the cheeks and just kind of pulling out to the sides. Maybe putting your hands to the sides of your face like you're holding the face of someone you really love. And just let your hands rest on the side of your face like you're saying, I see you. I'm here with you. I'm here for you. Keep your hands here longer if you like, or let your arms float out to the sides, or again, come back to rest on the belly. Let your whole body melt into the floor, into the ground. Notice if you can soften the lower back, the buttocks, the thighs. Imagine your whole spine lying on the ground. Let the collarbones at the front of the shoulders melt down into the shoulder blades and then release your arms down into the ground. Begin to welcome your breath. Notice how your breath feels right now, not over efforting the breath or forcing the breath, but just notice how your natural breath feels right now. In the meantime, you're like, add some stretches, some sighs. Maybe again, bring your head side to side. Just Keep noticing how much more you can release onto the ground. So many times we think we're relaxed. And if we pause and notice, we notice that we're still holding around the fronts of the shoulders often, the upper arms, the hands and fingers, the face. The belly is another place we hold a lot. Begin to imagine your breath is massaging up and down the spine. So as you inhale, you're inhaling down into the belly, and then the, there might be breath coming up towards the rib cage and maybe up towards the heart, and then exhale all the way back out to empty, letting the navel come in towards the spine and slightly up towards the heart, filling the belly, rib cage, chest, at your own pace, don't over effort the breath. My breath may be slower than yours and that's okay. And exhale all the way to empty. 
be deep in your breath so much that you might start to feel a gentle rocking on the lower back or the backs of the hip points. So your belly rises as it fills with the breath and then empties, falls as it empties. Stay with your breath. If the breath starts to feel over efforted or forced or short or choppy, then release the breath for a few moments and come back to it when you're ready. You never want to force the breath. And if you're still following your breath, imagine you're massaging up and down the spine with the breath. Imagine you're letting the whole spine relax a little bit more. Let it relax so much that it's moving. You might even notice some movement in the spine with the breath. Notice the movement of the belly, perhaps the expansion on the rib cage, on the sides. Maybe the breath can come up towards the heart or towards the collarbones. And we're going to begin to move a little bit more with the breath. You can stay just noticing your breath. If you're just really settling in, allow that. Throughout the practice, feel free to do less than I'm guiding. Do more movement if your body's like, I can't hold still that long. She's way too slow for me. Feel free to do more. So really make it your practice. These are suggestions I'm making and it's your body. It's your practice and your space. So do whatever you want. Give yourself permission to do whatever you want. So I'm bringing my feet wide. If you like, you can as well. I'm bringing my arms wide, making an A-frame, palms facing down, settling the upper arms, the hands, the backs of the shoulders onto the mat. And I'm again feeling my breath. And then I'm going to allow, as I exhale, let the knees drop over towards the right, as far as they want to come, as long as the left shoulder stays on the ground, my head is turning to the left, the left shoulder and the left upper arm is relaxed. And then inhale, knees and head back to center. And when you're ready to exhale, let the knees drift over to the right. Again, the, I mean the left, sorry, the right shoulder stays grounded, the right arm stays down. And come side to side. You might pause for a moment at center if the exhale isn't coming in yet. And then inhale back to center and exhale to the opposite side. And try to let go of, I'm going somewhere. I need to do as many of those these as I can. Try to come more into, oh, this feels kind of good for my body. Let me explore this for a while. Moving with your breath. Again, of course, if your body's craving more movement, move faster. If your body's craving a lot more movement, you can bring the knees into the chest and then keeping the shoulders grounded, but the knees drift side to side. So the whole lower body comes side to side as both the shoulders stay grounded. I'm gonna stay quite slow and sort of lazy on this very slow, deep stretch class. And when you've had enough, take your time. When you've had enough of these kind of twisty movements that are stretching the hips as well, 
You can bring the knees back to center and maybe hug the knees into the chest. Sometimes it feels nice to lift the head up and then slowly bring the head back down. And I really enjoy bringing the hands to the knees and making circles with the knees to massage the lower back. And you're staying with the breath. And bring the feet back down. Bring the arms alongside the body. On the next inhale, bring the right knee into the chest. You can clasp the hands behind the right thigh or in front of the right shin, or you can just Hold your hands to either side of the right um, thigh if that feels better for you. Keep the lower back pressed down. Don't force your hands to do something that your arms and your shoulders don't want to do. I'm staying with a deep, full breath. So I'm feeling my belly moving towards the right thigh or against the right thigh. Keeping the right knee hugged in, stretch the left leg long now, and maybe flex the left foot. If you like, lift the left leg up just a little bit off the ground and press through the heel or keep it down. And then inhale the left leg all the way up to perpendicular. Once the leg is overhead, lengthen the spine so your whole spine is still comfortable on the mat and start to circle the left foot at the ankle. Soften the fronts of the shoulders. The shoulders are melting into the mat. Again, your arms don't have to be clasped. They can be just to the sides of the thigh. Reverse the circles of that left foot. Keep pressing the lower back down. If you like, turn your head side to side. So you're really just Listening to your body. And then bringing the left foot to stillness. Keep pressing down into the lower back. So you're really feeling the lower back kind of stretching a little bit. I'm flexing my left foot. So I'm pressing out through the left heel, but then down through the back of the left leg on the floor, the left hip on the floor and start to slowly lower the left leg down. You can pause just before the leg touches and then inhale it back to perpendicular. And if you like, do a few of these leg lifts. Now, if your body is saying, nah, that's too much for me this morning, then just release the left leg back down and keep the right knee hugged in and just stay with your breath. Soften the face. This is probably the most energetic thing we'll do today. So just hang with me. Or again, you don't have to do it. I'm just awakening the muscles in my abdomen a little bit. Whenever you've had enough, Either just release the left leg and release the right leg to join it or bring both knees into the chest again. Maybe rock side to side, maybe again make circles to really nourish that lower back. Stay with your breath, stay with your body and what your body needs. Not what your mind wants, but what your body wants. Bring the feet back to the mat when your foot on complete. And when you're ready, bring the left knee into the chest. And you can hug it in for a moment. Again, you can clasp the hands behind the thigh. You can just let the hands rest to the sides of the thigh. Or you can clasp the hands in front of the left shin. Just feel the lower back widening across the floor. Maybe check, take care that your chin isn't pointing up to the sky. So tilt your chin towards your chest just a little bit so your neck stays in line with the rest of the spine. 
Whenever you feel ready, stretch the right leg long and you might flex the right foot. You might lift the right leg just an inch or two above the floor so that it's like you're standing on a wall in front of you and then lift the right leg up to perpendicular and once the leg is overhead lengthen the whole spine i'm actually pulling my shoulders out of the way to make sure that my whole back has my spine has a chance to extend you can circle the right foot at the ankle Let the tongue spread out across the bottom of the mouth. So imagine widening the upper palate, the roof of the mouth away from the tongue to kind of relax the tongue more. If you're circling your right foot, reverse the circles. So doming the roof of the mouth, the upper palate away from the tongue to soften the mouth, the tongue the jaw. When you're ready, start to do those leg lifts on the right side. Start to slowly lower the right leg down, stopping about hip distance from the mat, and then inhale back to perpendicular as slowly or as fast as you like. Again, you're always welcome to just release the right leg down. Staying with your breath. Imagine linking your mind to your breath. You might even say gently to your mind as you breathe in, inhale, and as you breathe out, exhale. Or just in as you breathe in and out as you breathe out. Sometimes giving the mind a mantra keeps it more in the present moment. It helps to soothe that overactive mind. So when you're complete with the leg lifts on this side, again, feel free to bring the knees into the chest or I'm gonna model stretching long this time. So I can stretch long from the fingertips to the feet, maybe even imagine that I'm climbing a ladder side to side. And I'm going to bring my knees into the chest because I really love that sensation. I'm actually going to lift up my head. Again, you can circle the knees. I like to uh, cross the ankles and hold on to the big toes if that works for you, and then circle the knees. So I'm just giving you options. You're on your back in your house, and you can do whatever you like. Bring the feet back to the mat when you're complete. Arms alongside the body, so the knees are still bent. The arms are alongside the body, palms facing down. And as you inhale, sweep the arms along the floor out to the side like you're painting angel wings in the snow. Maybe turn the palms up as you come halfway up and then bring the arms all the way overhead. Imagine you're making angels in the snow. So you're just sweeping the arms out to the sides and up and then down, all the way back down. So you're, imagine you're lying in the snow. You can turn the palms up as you come halfway up. And then as you come halfway down, turn them down again. So just do what feels good for your body. The next time your arms are overhead, if you like, Press into the feet and lift the hips up a little bit. And breathe. You can even rock your hips very, very gently side to side. And when you've had enough, bring the hips back down and bring the arms alongside the body, not sweeping, but down. And then you can again lift the arms up and the hips up if you like. If this is too much for you to lift the hips as you lift the arms, then alternate. So on one inhale, lifting the arms up and over. And then 
as after the arms come back down on the exhale, on the next inhale, lifting the hips and stretching the pelvis up to the sky and then slowly back down. Make this your practice. If you enjoy bringing the arms out to the sides, feel free to stay with those angel wings. And as you exhale, you might bring the arms straight back down rather than sweeping them down if you're lifting the hips. So just what feels good for your body. Make up your own flow. When you've had enough, bring the knees into the chest again. And then I'm going to give you the option to either keep the knees into the chest like I'm modeling or bring your feet back to the mat and bring the feet wide. Bring the arms out to the sides, just like we did before when the feet were on the mat and the knees were bent. And you're holding the ground with both arms. And as you exhale, let the knees drift over to the right, only so far that you can without the left shoulder coming up, maybe turn the head to the left. And then inhale, knees and head back to center. Exhale, knees to the left. You can see my knees are covering quite high so that my right shoulder stays down. My head is turning to the right. And coming side to side, use your arms so you're pressing into the palms to navigate the knees side to side, like your knees are part of a swing set and the arms are the supports of the swing set. Continue coming side to side, making sure to keep the uh, shoulders down. Again, you might be better off, your body might prefer bringing the feet to the mat and then just letting knees come side to side. I'm switching to that, you can too, or you can stay with the knees hugged in. This is your exploration. Do what feels good for your body. When you've had enough, I guess maybe we should come up off the floor and do a little bit more, not on lying down. So bring the knees to the right, bring the left arm across, and then press into that left hand, make your way into onto hands and knees. I'm just going to turn around because I'm used to facing this way, but you don't have to turn around. You can stay facing wherever you are. So I'm coming into table position. Fingers fanned out. Back is flat. Take care not to let the belly drop. So kind of zip up the belly like you have a zipper from your pelvis to your navel and hug the navel in towards the spine while the back stays flat. Take a deep inhale and as you exhale, Pull the hips towards the back of the room, keeping the back as flat as you can. And keep pulling the hips back even after you've come down as far as you can. And if, you, if it works for you, keep the belly hugged in as you rise back up on the inhale into table. Exhale, pull back. Make these movements really slow so that you feel a deep stretch in the lower back and the backs of the hip points. Come back and forth at your own pace. Again, to add a little ab work in, these, uh, in this back stretch, uh, keep the navel hugged in. So I'm doing like a sit-up action in the lower belly, keeping the belly hugged into the spine, and I keep the spine flat. The next time the hips come back, let's do a brief child's pose. So I'm gonna actually start out by bringing my knees wider to make more room for the belly and chest to drop. You don't have to. And I'm gonna make a pillow with my hands for my head so my, my brain has a soft place to land. And let yourself land. You can either just release the breath and just feel the ground under you or stay with the deep, deliberate breath and imagine you're stretching the skin on the back of the rib cage with each inhale and then letting the 
uh, rib cage, release the belly, drop further towards the mat on each exhale. Imagine you're really trying to stretch the back of the rib cage again, or just rest, whatever your body wants to do. Adding the breath gives the mind another layer to focus on, and so you're staying present and also adding the breath really soothes the nervous system. So there's a neurological benefit to deep, full inhales and deep, full exhales. When you're ready, take your time, come back up into table position. You can always kind of wag your hips side to side. Like you're a puppy and you're or a dog, just kind of wagging my tail very slowly. Come back to table position with the back flat. And then we're going to do some barrel rolls. Start to bring your chest and hips towards the right and then scoop out the belly towards the chest bring the spine up to the sky and move over to the left let the belly and the chest drop and then inhale back over to the right so i'm just kind of rolling my torso like a barrel like it's my torso is inside a barrel the image i like is imagine your knife is scraping the inside of the jar of peanut butter and your spine, your torso is the knife. So you're just kind of scraping all the sides. You have to adjust. It's a very flexible knife because it adjusts to the sides of the peanut butter jar. And breathe. Makes sense in my brain. It probably doesn't make sense in your brain, and that's okay. You can reverse this circle. I'm amusing myself. That's okay. Be with the breath. You can stay with these small movements, or you can come into bigger movements if your torso is um, kind of scraping. Um, is craving more movement. Uh, bring the knees wider, bring the arms a little forward and wider, and then start to circle your whole torso. If those barrel rolls feel felt really good for you, feel free to stay with those. If you're joining me, as you exhale, bring the hips to one side and then forward, arching your belly towards the mat and then over to the other side and all the way towards the top of the toes, bringing your Tailbone towards the top of the toes, staying with your breath, moving as slow or as fast as you like. You can reverse the circles. If you have tender knees and your knees are like, you're not being nice to me right now, then take a blanket and fold it up under your knees or double up your mat under the knees so that your knees are happier. Whenever you've had enough of these, come back to table position. Bring the arms closer so my wrists are now under my shoulders. My fingers are fanned out. My knees are under my hips. My back is flat. And then as you inhale, coming into a cat, a dog tilt, inhale the tailbone up, the belly low, the heart comes forward between the upper arms. Maybe the chin lifts up. And then as the exhale finds you, tuck the tailbone under, start to tuck the chin under, let the spine roll up towards the sky in a shape like a Halloween cat, like a cat kissing. Inhale, tailbone rises, belly drops low, chest comes forward between the upper arms, heart lifts, maybe chin lifts, exhale, 
at the pace of your breath round away from the mat, like your belly doesn't like the mat anymore and wants to get as far away from it as it can. Go back and forth with your, the pace of your breath. If it feels really good for you, feel free to hang out in cat tilt for several breaths. But if you're hanging out in one side, so cat tilt usually feels better because we love the sensation of stretching the body, the back body in it. Um, if you're hanging out on one side, then make sure you do an equal amount in dog tilt. And even though that might feel awkward, you're stretching the front body, stretching the skin on the belly, the chest. You're staying with the breath. Don't hang, don't let the shoulders come up towards the ears. So keep pressing into all 10 fingers. Move back and forth or hang out. Whenever you've had enough of these movements, then make your way to a seated position and just find a simple cross-legged position, crossing one leg in front of the other, removing the flesh from the sit bones. And if sitting cross-legged is like really awkward for you and you don't want to do it, you can stretch your legs wide, trying to keep the spine as long as you can. If you're sitting cross-legged, um, I have some blocks here. If you happen to have blocks or um, cereal boxes or whatever you have um, and your knees are quite high, you can support the knees using the blocks. So just get comfortable in any way that you that works for you. And breathe. Bring the arms out to the sides. And as you inhale, let the arms float overhead. Maybe even look up and exhale all the way back down. Turn the palms face down. Maybe the chin comes down towards the chest. Inhale, lift, get length, get longer through the spine. Exhale, back down. And on the next exhale, the arms come overhead. As you exhale, bring the left arm down to find the ground. And then start to walk those left fingers out. Keep the right sits bone grounded, the right arm alongside the right ear. And maybe soften the left elbow. You can even look up under the right arm if you like. But make sure your right hip stays down on the ground. The left shoulder softening. If this feels good, you can also sweep the right arm in front of the thighs and up towards the right, and then over in front of the shins and over to the left. So just find what feels good for you. Maybe it felt better to stay still. I'm gonna come back into stillness. When you're ready, press into both sits bones. Let your arms bloom up towards the sky. And then exhale, bring the arms back down. Let's do a few more sun breaths. Inhale, arms up, get long. Exhale, back down. You can also do this kneeling if you're uncomfortable sitting this way. And on the next exhale, we're gonna come into that little tilt to the other side, so arms rise up. And as you exhale, bring the right arm down. Keep the left sits bone rounded. Walk the right fingertips out, the left arm alongside the left ear, soften the right elbow. You can stay stationary or sweep the left arm in front of the feet and the shins and over to the left and then back like a windshield, like a very lazy Saturday morning windshield wiper. I'm gonna come back to stillness instead. My right shoulder is coming away from the ear, so I'm not creeping up towards the ear, so I'm not over equiting. On the next inhale, I'm gonna rise back up, both arms overhead, bring the hands together, and then exhale, bring your hands to your chest. And then just kind of shake out the arms, shake out the shoulders. We're gonna stay here, maybe even lean back and stretch out your legs. 
maybe pump your thighs a little bit. You can bring the legs in front of you, kind of pump your thighs. You can circle the feet at the ankles. Taking a little recliner with your arms. Reverse the circles. And we're going to come back to a cross-legged position if that works for you. If you're recrossing your legs, see if you can bring the other leg to the front or again bring the legs wide. Remove the flesh from the sit spots. We're just going to do a twist now. So bring the right hand to the left knee, the left hand behind you. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what my, um, so I, the, um, all right, I'll start out with the, Sorry. So I'm putting my left hand to my right knee. Now I'm confusing you, right? Because I was mirroring you before. And my right hand is making a fist and I'm putting it close to the hips and I'm getting long through the um, base of the buttocks to through the sits bones. And I'm breathing. And as I exhale, I'm starting to twist the spine around itself so my belly and then my chest and lastly my head come towards the right shoulder my your hand your right hand might be better with the palm on the ground or you can also bring the right arm around to the left side of the hip to wind the arms um, kind of around the spine breathe stay with your breath and slowly unwind. Maybe just bring the arms side to side and just tilt your torso side to side to soften a little bit. And we're going to do the other side. So now bring the right hand to the left knee, the left hand behind you. Make a fist or a palm flat or wrap the arm around the uh, right side of the hips or the buttocks or the I get long, so I'm still looking to the front. And then slowly wind the navel, the rib cage, the chest, and lastly the head to look towards the right shoulder. Shoulders softening away from the ears. Breath massaging up and down the spine. unwind and then bring the hands behind you and bring your feet in front of you i'm just going to push my blocks out of the way and bring your feet really wide my feet are actually wider than the mat maybe not so bring your feet as wide as they like to be kind of lean back into your arms and as you exhale let the knees drift over to the right the left hip comes over you can let your Heart come over even if you like, and then inhale back to center and exhale knees to the left, the right hip comes over, the heart can even come over. So you can stay quite slow and moving lazily, kind of like I'm modeling, or your, so when the knees are going to the left, your arm, your right arm might like to come across and swing it side to side. So just Feel what feels good for your body. If your body, again, is craving more, the next time the knees are to the right, you can lift the hips up and sweep the left arm in front of the face alongside the ear and then come back down. And if you've done that on one side, you might do the other side. Bring the knees to the left, um, lift the hips up. Sweep the right arm in front of the face and behind you and back down. And you can come back to just letting knees drift side to side or let the arm float across or keep lifting the hips if that feels, I think I'm gonna do a couple more of those that felt really good to me. So just listen to your body. How many times have I said that during this practice? And whenever you're ready, you can bring the knees to the right, bring the left arm across, and then come down onto forearms or elbows. You can even walk the hands a little bit back to the left. And then just let your chest and your head 
hammock down. So you're just hanging out in this twist. Breathing up and down the spine. Allow whatever your body wants to do. So if your body says, this doesn't feel good for me, feel free to come back to movement instead or adjust so your body feels supported and nourished and happy. And if you've done one side, then sweep the left arm across, bring the knees to center and then over to the left. The right arm comes across. You can see I'm walking my hands a little bit back to the right, coming down to forearms to elbows. Don't strain, don't over effort. This is a yummy pose. My body likes to just gently sway my head and my chest likes to gently sway side to side here. And whenever you're ready, make your way back onto the back for just a moment. And once you're on your back, you might bring the knees into the chest. You might rock side to side again and say, oh, I remember being here. It felt really good to be here before. Let's do happy baby. So bring the knees wide. Reach inside the legs for the insteps or the ankles or the heels. The knees are to the sides of the chest as much as you can. You're not forcing. You can stay stationary or run side to side. And if it feels good for your body, again, if your body's craving a little bit more as you rock to the right, you can extend the right leg out to the side and then bring the heel back down towards the buttocks, rock to the left, left leg extends. Maybe the head looks to the left. Don't turn the head in the opposite direction here. You don't want to torque the neck. So stay in your version of happy baby rocking side to side, staying stationary, stay with your breath. Stay there as long as you like. And then let your limbs float up to the sky coming into dead love. Ah, let your whole torso melt into the ground. I like to like soften the knees and the elbows so my limbs are kind of like um, just a little less effort in the legs. You can stay here. If your legs might be happier, extended, your arms extended. Your legs and arms might be happier moving, doggy paddling, scissoring. In any way that feels good for you, you can cha-cha-cha on the ceiling. You can shake it out if your body wants to. That actually feels really good, shaking the limbs. So maybe you try it if your body says no thanks. Not today. Feel free to stop the your body is enjoying shaking right now. Ah, we tend to really stiffen up during these times. So adding movement can feel really, really wonderful. But adding movement while lying on the floor is even better. You can even have a temper tantrum, like you're a kid going, ah, have your temper tantrum on the floor. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so silly today. <laughs> when you've had enough, bring the knees into the chest. And again, rock to one side. And then you can either come up to table position or rock roll all the way onto the belly. Come down onto the belly when you're ready. And just make a pillow with the hands for the head. Let yourself melt onto the belly. <sighs> Sometimes it feels very soothing to lie on the belly. And then we're gonna, you can keep lying on the belly if that feels really good for you. Or I'm trying to pull my shirt back down, lift your chest. 
and bring your elbows under your shoulders coming into sphinx pose so the forearms are parallel to each other the fingers are fanned out let the fronts of your thighs melt into the ground let your bottom melt towards the pelvis let your belly drag down into the ground your heart spilling forward between the arms. This time, you don't have to um, push into the forearms. Let your shoulders come up to your ears. So usually we keep the head lifted. This time, give yourself a turning knife. You can even, it feels really good for me to just let my head dangle and my shoulders come up to the ears and then continually check in with the fronts of the thighs, soften the fronts of the thighs, soften the buttocks. Feel the belly being massaged by the breath, soften between the shoulder blades. So this might feel really good for you. If you want to add a little more front body stretch, then let your chest rise up a little bit. Press into the forearms. So press into the forearms to open the heart a little bit, soften the buttocks. Again, you might be staying low. That might have felt really good for you. And if your body says, I want more stretch, so you're feeling a stretch from the pelvis, to the belly, to the chest, hanging out on the forearms. You can stay here, or if your body still says it once more, turn the fingers out to the side, and then lift your elbows up. I like to even walk the hands in, and then letting my thighs straight down, my buttocks softened, the belly, Spill forward, the heart wants to be towards the wall in front of me, between the arms. Stay here as long as you like. If this feels really yummy, stay longer. You can always come back down onto the forearms. You can always come back down, bring the uh, hands parallel to each other again. You can always come back down to letting the head drop where we started. Whenever your body says enough, sink down onto the belly, make a pillow with the hands for the head or turn the cheek to one side. So you get a nice neck stretch, let your whole body melt into the ground. Maybe bend the knees and windshield wiper feet side to side. Your belly soften, your heart lie on the ground. You can release your feet whenever you like. If your cheek is turned to one side, pick up the head and turn the opposite cheek to the mouth. Let go even more. Let go even more. Let go even more. When you're ready, bring your head back to center and then make a pillow with the hands for the head. So let your forehead rest on your hands again. Bend the right knee coming into half frog. I know this is many of your favorite. And maybe if you've never done it before, you can um, find it and also feel really good. So if my right leg is like a frog leg, my right thigh and my right shin are parallel to each other. My belly is just draping down. My uh, right knee is actually feeling tender right now. So I'm going to take my blanket and then just support my right knee and that feels really good for me right now you might not have a tender knee but for some reason that right knee today says no that doesn't feel good 
You can stay here or you can explore turning the head to the right. Don't turn it to the left. Turn it to the right the same way the leg is bent. You can also make those goal post arms with your hands and arms. If you've turned your head to the right and it doesn't feel comfortable, then make that pillow with the hands for the head. Again, bring the head to center. And if sometimes my shoulder, my right shoulder, doesn't want to be hanging like that, and so then I can also bring the arm down. I can bring it alongside the leg. I can bring it even on the leg. I can bend it in some way. I can even turn the. I'm just exploring what's gonna. Um, you can also, if you have a blanket, put it under that right shoulder. Put your belly drape down. And my left shoulder now says it wants some support. So I'm extending my left arm alongside my left thigh. Yes, that's perfect now. <laughs> and breathe. Find the place where your body says, yes, that's perfect now. Stay there as long as you like. If you're ready to come out of it, you might um, bring the hands alongside the chest, bring the head back to center, extend the right leg long. You can bend the knees and winch your legs or feet side to side. Move this blanket out of the way. And then come to the other side. So bring the left thigh and the left chin parallel to perpendicular to each other and turn the head to the left or stay with the pillow for your head. You can make those pitch forward arms and you'll notice this side feels totally different than the other side. So my left knee says it's perfectly fine. It doesn't need a blanket. But my right arm, my right shoulder says it wants some support. So I'm bringing the right arm alongside the right thigh. I'm just checking the time you stay down, breathe. Soften the roof of the mouth away from the tongue again. Imagine doming the upper palate away from the tongue to soften the jaw. Stay there as long as you like. When you're ready, bring the head back to center, extend the left knee long, bring the hands alongside the chest, gather the belly in, come up into table slowly, and then keep going into extended child or child's pose. Bring your hips towards your heels. Maybe make a pillow with the hands for the head, maybe Back your hips side to side. We're going to do one more before Shavasana, final relaxation. So um, come back to a seated pose. Bring your bottom to the mat. And then bring the soles of the feet toward each other. Remove the flesh from the sit bones. You can bring your heels as close to your pelvis as you like. Don't force it though. So don't, don't, you're not trying to bring them in as far as you can. You're, you're finding where you're comfortable. The feet don't have to be together. They can be a, wide, a little bit wider apart. And pause for a moment to arrive. You can see my knees are hovering quite high. You can again use blocks for your knees. I'm going to bring my blocks in so I can model some options from blocks here. So the blocks can be supporting your knees. If you have blocks or something else, you can also bring the blocks inside the feet. Can you see the blocks here? And then you can um, hinge forward wherever you are, whether you have blocks or not. And just if you have blocks, you can let your elbows or forearms just let rest on your blocks. Feel free to adjust the blocks to any height. You can always make them taller. You can also let your head rest on the blocks. 
if you don't have blocks in before you don't want to use blocks, you're just hinging forward at the hip and letting your head drop. Soften your belly. Do your best not to over effort. You're not forcing the body into this pose. This is a yin pose called butterfly. And this is one of the most nourishing poses there are. It helps to restore energetic flow in your body. And you'll notice as you stay here longer, you might start to come down a little bit more. You can always adjust your blocks or adjust your elbows or forms. Again, do your best not to strive. So just because my head may be lower than your head, you're not doing it wrong. Your body is different than my body. I can actually hear some abdominal noises. So my, the organs in my abdomen are saying, oh yes, we needed this, we needed this deep release. If you're feeling or hearing abdominal noises in this very slow practice, it's because the organs in your abdomen are saying, we really needed this release, this whole practice, this slow, gentle practice to help us function better. When we're under stress, there is no digestion. When we're under stress, there's no or little digestion and the body needs to relax in order to digest. So that's why this really slow, deep practice that we're doing today is so helpful. Not just to the mind, not just as an emotional relief, it's a way to remind the body how to relax. You're reminding the body to let go. You're telling the body by slowing down your breath that it's safe to let go. Stay here longer if you like. I'm going to stay a little longer because it feels really good for me. If your body is like, I need to get out of Dodge, feel free to come out very slowly. Use the hands to come up. So use the press into the hands to start to lift up. You can let knees when show like they're side to side again if you like. I'm going to have to force myself to come out of this. Maybe just a few more moments. Again, if you're really tired of it, if you really want to come out of it. Our next pose is Shavasana. So you can, Shavasana is just on relaxation, lying on your back, lying on your belly lying in any way that feels comfortable for you. You might gather some blankets, some pillows for support if you like. If you want to finish with legs up the chair, then either scoot your mat to towards a couch or a chair or Bring a chair to your mat. I'm going to model how to come out of it. So I'm going to lift up slowly and then walk my hands very, very slowly. So move as slowly as you can so you're not shocking your body. 
And then I'm going to even use my hands to bring the knees back up, bring the feet to the mat. And then I'm going to lean back on my forearms and come all the way down onto the back. Once I'm on the back, I'm going to take a moment in constructed rest pose, letting the knees rest against each other. Well, that feels perfect for the stretching that I was experiencing in the lower back. So making your way into Shavasana, your final relaxation, I'm going to model legs up the chair if you want to try that. That's really a very therapeutic pose. You don't have to if you don't want to do legs up the chair, you don't have to. So um, bringing my hips close to the chair, and since it's a very, it's a folding chair, it's light, I can pull it closer and then letting my legs rest on the chair, lengthening my spine. I can start by letting my hands rest on my belly or out to the side or wherever they like. I'm definitely going to need some blankets. Sometimes it's really nice to have a blanket on the chair if you have a hard chair like me, and then a blanket to cover yourself up. And you might also be, I'll show you Shavasana if you don't know, I'm sure you know Shavasana. So uh, if you just don't want to use legs up the chair and you have a pillow or a bolster, so I just have a big pillow, you can use a couch pillow. I recommend that you put some kind of pillow over your, under your knees to support the knees. I have this flexible pillow that I can kind of double up. So if you have any lower back issues, you really don't want to um, have your legs extended long. But just find your Shavasana wherever it is. I'm going to come up and I'm going to guide you in Shavasana while I'm sitting. But you get just very comfortable. I'm going to move this out of the chair. I mean, out of the way. Ah. Make any adjustments. You can also bring your legs up a wall if you want to do that. And if you're already comfortable and lying in your supported pose, take a moment to scan through your body. Take, I'm just layering up because I'm feeling a little cold. You might use a blanket to cover up with. Let your body melt into the ground. You are done. You have nowhere to go. Allow the earth to support you. Welcome your body onto the ground. Let go a little more. Release even more. Where can you soften? What else can you relax a little more? Let your breath Scan your body to see where you can release more, softer in the bottom. Soften the thighs.
Let your belly release even more. Let your hands, fingers, arms, shoulders release more. Like a raft on a wave, let your mind rest on the flow of your breath. Stay with your breath. Like a raft on a wave. Let your mind rest on the flow of your breath. Stay with your breath. Your attention will repeatedly drift away from your breath. That's okay, simply return to greet your breath over and over and over again. Here's a poem by Dana Folds called Awakening Now. Why wait for your awakening? The moment your eyes are open sees the day. Would you hold back when the beloved beckons? Would you deliver your litany of sins like a child's collection of seashells prized and labeled? No, I can't step across the threshold, you say, eyes cast down. I am not worthy. I'm afraid, and my motives aren't pure. I am not perfect. And surely I haven't practiced nearly enough. My meditation isn't deep, and my prayers are sometimes insincere. I still chew my fingernails, and the refrigerator isn't clean. Do you value your reasons for staying small more than the light shining through the open door? Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Now is the only time you have to be whole. Now is the sole moment that exists to live in the light of your true self. Perfection is not a prerequisite for anything but pain. Perfection is not a prerequisite for anything but pain. Please, oh please, don't continue to believe in your disbelief. This is the day of your awakening. Stay in your final relaxation, your well-deserved resting position as long as you like. I'm going to leave you now, and I hope to spend more time with you soon. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. Be well. Take care. Namaste. Thank you.